Rub up your engines! Here we have a 2010 Honda Fit. Guy bought his used car, $3,500. Let's see if he got a deal. Already bought it with 116,000 miles, $3,500. Gets phenomenal gas miles. It'll get 40 on the highway. So now people more see them as compact cars, not subcompacts. But as you can see, there's lots of room in the front. It has back seats. And even though these seats are all the way back here, there's still room in the back. And as you look in the back, they're very convenient because it's got the trunk, but of course, these seats will flip down. And when you flip them down, there's a lot of space in one of these things. Yeah, it's a small car, but it's very well proportioned for what people want to use them for. They're great commuting cars, but hey, you can take trips in them. You can go camping in them. You can throw stuff in there. But of course, the main thing with this is it's a Honda. Now this particular one, hey, it lives in Pennsylvania. And you can see all the corrosion. That's just what happens with aluminum. Down here, you can see the corrosion. You're gonna get superficial corrosion. That's not something to chase you away from a car. Now, even though it's got 121,000 miles on it, the engine doesn't burn any oil at all. Oh. Now this guy spent a long time looking for this thing, almost a year to find it. And he ended up buying it from a nurse because her husband wanted to get a pickup truck. So they sold this and got a used pickup truck. There's always reasons for people to sell cars that are still decent. In this case, this was more or less their spare car and it turned into their spare car. And spare cars, hey, they're great buys because people, oh, well, I don't need that anymore. Take advantage of somebody who doesn't want a nice car anymore and buy it. This is why I always tell people, the best deals an average human's gonna get is from individual people because they have a reason to sell something and if they're not getting rid of it because it's a pile of junk, they just don't need it anymore. Now, this is a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine. It's not a race car, but it's a small car. And because of its age, this is not that Earth Dream stuff. It doesn't have a turbocharger. It doesn't have gasoline direct injection. It has normal Honda systems. It does have the IV tech, so it gets as much power as it can out of a little engine without ruining it by putting too much pressure from a turbo and from gasoline direct injection. As you can see, it's sort of a dinosaur because it's still got an EGR valve here. The new ones don't use EGR valves. Nice stock wheels. It's front wheel drive. It handles great in the snow. Being an economy car, it's got drum brakes in the back, which doesn't bother me in the least because, hey, my Matrix has drum brakes in the back too. So let's start it up and check it out. Of course it starts up, it's a Honda. And listen to that engine. Smooth, even though it's 1.5 liter. You hear a tiny bit of clacking. As I always tell people, Hondas are different than other cars. You need to adjust the valves. Now he adjusted the valves himself, but he adjusted them cold. So I would say you can readjust them warm. It's not gonna really hurt anything. Now, he did have one problem, which is typical for these. And you can see down there, the AC clutch is all nice and shiny. And that's because it's brand new. It broke. The AC clutch broke. He took it in. The guy went over a thousand bucks to fix it, right? Well, he's a smart guy. So what did he do? He went and bought a clutch or something for a hundred bucks and he did it himself. You know, that's the thing about these. Look at the working room. Front wheel drive, all kinds of working rooms. I like about these little cars. You can work on them. They're easy to work on. God forbid something happened, you flooded it out. The engine comes out real easy too. If you want to buy a used engine and throw it in. They don't generally wear out, but I mean, you know, you can suck water in and blow up an engine real fast. Let's take it for a spin. It is an economy car. Things are thinner. They're not insulated much. They make noise, but they can run forever. Running perfectly fine, shifting fine. But you gotta notice one thing with the fits. Here's our bumpy Rhode Island road. They're relatively stiff riding. You're gonna feel bumps when you hit them because this is an economy car. And never, I repeat, never buy one of these and expect a really smooth ride. You can't, even in my wife's matrix. It's a bumpy ride. I tried all kinds of different shocks, springs, doesn't make any difference. They're short wheelbase, they're small cars. You're gonna feel bumps. They're smooth on a highway when it's a smooth highway, yeah. And they handle like a dream. This handles even better than a Matrix, but they are bumpy rides. Don't ever get one of these if you want a smooth ride. That's not what these things are about. But they are great handling. These Hondas are fun to drive around. And you can see, even though it's got an automatic transmission, it still shifts really smooth. And of course, due to their small size, these things are easy to park. They're great for cities. You can park these things simply. Anyone can park them, they're so small. And they have a good view all the way around too. They really don't have any blind spots. They're pretty well designed. And even though they got that little engine and you stop on the gas, 
They got that Honda engine, you can feel it. It's got that Honda variable valve timing, and they got a lot of zing for a little car. And there's one thing I like best about this car. As you can see, made in Japan. And interestingly enough, the man who owns this car came from Cambodia, and this is the first car he ever bought here in the United States. Then later, last year, he helped his brother get a good used Camry for $2,300. Smart people, they know where to spend their money. Now, it does have one code, so let's see what's going on. Here we go. Do intelligent diagnosis. It knows what it is. And it'll go through all this stuff. Do a smart scan. Now, I believe he's changed some of the headlights out, so it might have some codes for the headlights. Who cares? You put in LEDs and stuff and replace it with non-LEDs. It can put up codes and stuff, but as long as they work, who cares? The headlights lights work fine. We got two reds. One is the tire pressure mounting system. He knows the batteries are bad. He don't want to spend a fortune replace them. I don't blame him. Tire gauges cost a little, but it does have a BCM code. So let's check that out. The body control module. Okay. Well, his daytime running lights work, but he swapped them out and he didn't want to buy the coder. So that doesn't really mean anything. We don't care about that either. Now this car's trying to tell me something. You can see the headlights are flashing. They're actually not flashing. Special lights that he put in there and the sun is shining into them. When I look here, this is not flashing, but the camera's picking up on it. <laughs> so it's a magical car, you know? For the 3,500 bucks that he paid for it, it's the first car his family ever had here in the United States. He used his noggin on this one. This was before coronavirus, so he only paid 3,500 bucks for it. He wanted a Civic, but of course, kids like the Civics, and they were eight grand instead of 3,500. Hey, this is a fun, well-made car. You find one of these in this kind of shape, hey, snap it up. Just like I warned you though, if you're into really smooth riding cars, you're not gonna be happy because it is a compact car and it rides like a compact car, but it's gonna run forever. So me, it's my kind of car. I don't care if it bounces around a little, as long as it doesn't break and gets good gas mileage and still looks nice, I'm happy. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, if you agree with me and you think used car prices are high, here's an insane one. Somebody just paid $23,000 for a 1988 Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making this up. Now, granted, it was a Civic 25X hatchback. Looks kind of like a little station wagon. That was Japanese. It's right-hand driver. It was imported from Japan. But it's still only got a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine. Granted, it has dual carbs. In Japan, to make them faster, they had two carburetors. But they weren't the greatest carburetors in the world. Those Cayenne carburetors were not that great. I didn't like them at all. I had a lot of them in the cords. I thought they were garbage. It's got a five-speed manual transmission. 23 grand. That's a lot of money for a Honda Civic that's, you know, 30 three years old. <laughs> <laughs> but the seller did say that the clutch was replaced between 2017 and 2018. <laughs> What a deal. Well, it just goes to show you that people will pay just about anything for a car these days. Pay that kind of money for a 1988 Honda Civic. Now, yeah, it's kind of a collector's item, but really it's still just a Honda Civic with a little 1.5 liter engine and dual carbs. It's not a racing machine. What do they say? Beauty is in the eye of the holder. Somebody thought it was beautiful enough. 23 grand out for the thing. Well, believe it or not, you can now get an electric van in the United States. It's made in a factory that used to make Hummers. It's called Electric Last Mile Solutions. It's in Indiana. They're built in these electric vans. Now, truthfully, the motors, all the parts and everything come from China. They're just putting them together here in the United States. You know, they have regulations, laws. You build them over here. They don't have tariffs, stuff like that. And they're thinking about the future. Give American jobs. They're not going to shut a company down, right? So in Mishawaka, Indiana, where they made the Hummers, they're now making these electric vans. They say it's the first electric class one delivery van to be sold in the United States. A dealership owned by the Randy Marion Automotive Group has ordered a thousand of them and they're going to start selling them. They're not small, they have a 120 inch wheelbase and they say they can carry 2,100 pounds of cargo. And they also say they're going to make a class three vehicle that's much heavier duty in the second half of 2022. So now the race is on with electric vans. You got Rivian making stuff, now you got the smaller company in Indiana getting all the stuff from China and putting them together here. The competition is going to be on. It's a good thing because a lot of these electric vehicles, the prices are sky high. You get the stuff from China and put them together here, certainly the price is going to be lower. Look at all the Chinese stuff we have. It's only going to be a matter of time when there's going to be serious competition. It's just going to be these guys think, well, I can make a custom make electric vehicle, charge whatever I want, blah, blah, blah. No, there's going to be competition on it. And this little van that holds 2,100 pounds, it could be the tip of the iceberg for our electric delivery vans. You can get a higher end Rivian ones made in Michigan, and then you can get these Chinese ones that are put together in India. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.